If you're a buyer struggling to get into a home in the Halifax Dartmouth area, then keep watching this video because it might be a little bit eye-opening for you. There's no doubt that over the last few years, the Halifax real estate market has been insane. And if you're looking to buy a home in HRM this year, that means there's about a 50% chance that you're gonna end up in a multiple offer situation. And if you're looking up to $550,000 or below, that means there's probably even a higher chance you're gonna be in a multiple offer situation. So generally speaking, we're seeing a lot of failing offers out there. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you eight reasons why your offers may be getting rejected in a multiple offer situation. And hopefully this will help you get a successful accepted offer in between now and the end of the year, if that's what you're looking to do. And the truth is, this market is probably not going anywhere for quite some time, especially in the lower price brackets. So anything under about 550 or 600,000. So for example, if you are looking at a semi-detached property in Lower Sackville and there's eight offers on it, well, only one of those offers can be successful. So the next week when something else comes up that's very similar, you're probably gonna see six or seven offers on that property. And even if some of those buyers drop out of the market because they're disappointed or they're giving up, or maybe they think they can't afford it anymore, the truth is there's still gonna be multiple offers, whether it's three, four, or eight, it doesn't really matter. Either way, you need to have a good system in place to write a good offer to ensure success in this market. So this level of competition is making things extremely difficult for home buyers in Halifax. So if you're feeling defeated, if you keep getting rejected offers, you're not alone. There's more failure out there than there is success at this very moment. Now, just before I get into it a little bit more, if you're new here, my name's Andrew Stevens, and I've been a realtor in Halifax for nine years now. And if you're looking to be educated on the Halifax real estate market, then this is the channel for you. So go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to book a call with me, if you're thinking about buying a home or if you want some advice in the home buying process, you can reach out to me anytime in the Calendly link below in my description at a time when it's convenient for you. All right, so I have eight points and I'm going to keep them as clear and concise as possible. So let's get right into it. Number one, too low on the purchase price. Now this is the most obvious glaring thing when you're writing an offer, you need to be either the highest price or very close to the highest price to ensure success and make sure that you're looking at recent sold comparable properties, not what's on the market now, what not what was listed three months ago. You want to get the most comparable properties that are the most recent ones that you can find and just know that the listing price really means nothing. It's more of a marketing price and a lot of homes right now, especially in the under $550,000 range are being priced low on purpose to drive these multiple offer situations to put buyers in a difficult spot. And I know this is tough to hear, but the truth is you can't blame the seller for wanting to cash in on what's likely their biggest investment or one of their biggest investments that they have. It's their general idea that they're going to get the most money possible out of their home when they go to sell it and you cannot blame them for that. So generally speaking, to ensure success, you must be the highest offer or very close to the highest offer in order to be in the game when they're looking at the best couple offers that they have on the table. So moving on to number two, too long of a due diligence period. So this one always amazes me and I see a lot of buyers and a lot of buyers agents asking for really long due diligence periods. This is a mistake. You should be meeting conditions in five to seven business days if you're in a multiple offer situation. And if you can't get this done, it's normal on the financing side of things that people are commenting about. And truth be told, if this is the case, then you need a different mortgage specialist. Now that might be a bit of a hot take, but here's the thing. If I send a deal to one of my go-to mortgage brokers, they have an approval back to my inbox within 48 to 72 hours. So if they can do it, it can be done. Period. End of story. If your mortgage broker is telling you they need 10 days or 14 days for conditions to get an approval, then it's not the right fit for you and you're already way behind the eight ball in a multiple offer situation when it's extremely competitive. And if you have 14 days on your timeline for your due diligence period, this is going to significantly decrease your chance of getting an accepted offer right off the bat. Sellers want to see the quickest timelines possible because once their property is tied up as a pending offer, that means they're going to start losing some momentum 
momentum and maybe some of those other buyers that were interested might go find another property so they really want it clued up as quick as possible because if it doesn't work out they want to be able to move on as quickly as possible so this means your mortgage broker should have you pre-approved they should have every single document from you not waiting for any other documents you should have your home inspector and your lawyer picked out ready to go and this way it will streamline things to make sure you can meet conditions within that five to seven business day timeline so while we're on the topic of conditions let's move on to number three and this is too many conditions so this is something that i see all the time there's way too many conditions and a lot of offers to come across my table and the truth is the standard conditions are financing inspection insurance lawyer review and deposit and in 99 percent of cases anything extra to this is probably overkill 80 to 90 percent of the time i would say right now in halifax we have all the documents up front when we're going to write the offer so these should be reviewed and you should not have to include them in their offer and if you do ask for them in the offer that means to me as a listing agent you're not already having these documents reviewed which means it's just one more thing that might come up that might end up killing the deal at the end of the day if it's something that doesn't matter or if it's something that's not truly going to affect your decision of whether you yes go ahead and purchase this property or no i'm going to kill the deal then don't put it in your offer anything over that is overkill and this leads me into point number four and this is not signing off on the documents with the offer so the biggest ones that I see, generally speaking, would be the property disclosure statement and if there's any leased or rented equipment on the property, the equipment schedule. So these are documents that oftentimes we have up front and oftentimes I see buyers, agents or buyers putting them as a condition in the offer. But I've already sent this to you as a listing agent, so why not take it out of your offer and not have it as a condition and submit it with your offer that's already signed off that you reviewed it and you approve of it. So this is going to be one less condition in your offer, but more importantly, as a listing agent and as the seller, that is to me saying, I'm getting some confidence in your offer because I know you've reviewed the documents. I know you've signed off on the documents. So I see that you're invested, you're committed to this house and you want this house and you're serious about it and you're taking the time to do it right. Now, moving on to number five, and this one is not meeting the seller's preferred closing date. Again, this one is pretty obvious, but in the pack of multiple offers, you want to give the seller what they want as much as possible. So this means meeting their preferred closing date if they have one and if that is possible for you to do so right now we're in a seller's market you want your offer to stand out from the pack and the sellers have all the power which means as a buyer you need to be flexible you need to give them the closing they want if it's possible and you need to make your offer as clean as possible moving on to number six and this one is not submitting a pre-approval letter with your offer so if you're pre-approved you can easily ask your mortgage broker to give you a letter stating that you're pre-approved so they'll provide you with a letter on a letterhead with all their info and it'll say you know this person is pre-approved approved up to X dollars. So this is important. It'll help instill confidence in the seller and the seller's agent. And even if you don't submit a pre-approval letter, hopefully your agent, if you're working with a buyer's agent, is telling the seller's agent that, yeah, hey, they are pre-approved with a mortgage broker I know, I'm confident in the financing, and so on. Again, you wanna instill confidence in the seller that your offer is the best one that's likely to go through and not fall on a financing condition. Now we're almost to the finish line. This one is the second last one, number seven. And this one is not including a personal letter to the seller with your offer. Now, I don't always think that this is going to be the be all end all that you're gonna get the house just because you submit a letter that talks about yourself and why you want the property. But there are some cases that it makes a very big difference. So for example, think about your grandmother selling her property and think about a nice letter coming in with a nice young family saying that, you know, they love the way that she cared for the home. They love the house. They can't wait to make memories there with their own kids with a picture of them and their family. Something like that goes a long way in certain circumstances. So for example, I once had a client that was a single mother of two and they had a rescue dog as well. And when she was selling her property, we had, I believe it was six or seven offers. Now, one of the offers was a little bit lower than the highest one, but it was still a very good offer and it came with a letter. And this buyer was also a single mother of two with a rescue dog. They had a picture of her and the family there. And really my seller 
couldn't not sell it to this person. She was obsessed with the idea that she was handing it down to somebody just like her, who was her when she was younger, and it helped get the deal across the finish line for that particular buyer. And the seller actually ended up taking, I think it was five or six grand less than they could have because they wanted it to go to this specific buyer. So is it always the case that this is going to help you? No, but in certain circumstances, this can be a huge, huge factor in securing an accepted offer. So is this always the be all end all and it's always going to be helpful? No, not necessarily. But in certain circumstances, this could be a huge, huge difference maker in helping you get a successful accepted offer. So last but certainly not least, and I mentioned this in almost every home buying video that I do like this, but number eight is not working with an agent. So the seller has their own agent who's representing them and their best interest, like I've said in some other videos. And you as a buyer, it's one of the hardest times in the history of Halifax to purchase a home. So you should have your own guidance and somebody advising you of how to navigate you through this process. And this will definitely help you get to a successful accepted offer. Now, if you've been looking for a home for the last couple of years in Halifax and you're not having any success and this video speaks to you, just know you're not alone. There's a lot of failure out there going on. There's a lot of multiple offer situations. So there's a lot of disappointed home buyers, but keep your foot on the gas, do the right things. Hopefully some of these tips will help you get to a successful offer in the near future. So if you've been looking for a home and you haven't had any success, these eight points should really help push you along in the right direction. And if you're not represented by an agent currently and you'd like to chat with me about this, you can reach out to me in my Calendly link below anytime in the description. And if you're still here watching and you got any value out of this video, all I ask is that you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content. And that'll help push this out to more people like you who might be interested in getting educated on the Halifax and Dartmouth real estate market. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support and have a great day.